The sexuality of men throughout history is a diverse tapestry, woven with threads from the biological, sociocultural, and psychological realms. However, in recent times, this complex subject has been simplified and compartmentalized into an artificial system of sexual orientation labels, often with societal pressure to self-identify into one category. This has resulted in a reductionist view of men's sexuality, one that is not necessarily reflective of the lived experiences of many men. A deep dive into history reveals that the concept of sexual orientation is a relatively modern phenomenon. Prior to the late 19th century, the terms homosexual and heterosexual didn't exist. In fact, it wasn't until after the 1940s that the terms began to make their way from medical literature to more common parlance in American society. In ancient Rome, a society with a radically different understanding of sexual norms compared to our modern context, there was no overt need to categorize individual sexuality. The focus was less on the gender of one's partner and more on one's societal role in the act itself. A Roman male citizen was expected to be the dominant partner in any sexual act, whether his partner was a woman, a slave, or a non-citizen male. There was no contradiction seen in a Roman man having relations with both men and women, as long as he maintained his dominant, active role. This behavior coexisted with traditional marriages between men and women without necessitating the labels of homosexual or heterosexual that we use today. The codification of men's sexual behavior into distinct categories began in the 19th century, parallel to the rise of the field of sexology and the notion of sexual identities. This move towards labeling served the interests of certain power structures. The categorization of men's sexuality allowed religious institutions and societal moral arbiters to more easily regulate behavior, aligning it with prescribed norms and ideals. The concept of men being divided by their sexual preferences serves a hierarchical purpose, enabling control and dominance over their personal lives. It is an instrument that enables certain groups, like religious institutions and even, arguably, some women's movements, to shape societal attitudes towards masculinity, often creating rigid, conformist expectations. It's also worth noting that the creation of these divisions benefits those who wish to suppress expressions of close relationships between men that are non-sexual. It fuels paranoia and distance, as men are more cautious about forming close relationships with other men due to fear of being mislabeled or misunderstood. As a result, the emotional support networks that men could potentially form are weakened, if not outright destroyed. As a result of these societal trends, spaces traditionally associated with male bonding and mutual support have been progressively dismantled or redefined. Historically, men congregated in various social contexts, from Roman bathhouses to the fraternal orders of the Middle Ages, to taverns, barbershops, and athletic clubs. These spaces fostered camaraderie, mentorship, and emotional support, playing a significant role in the socialization of men. However, the increasing compartmentalization of men's sexuality has cast a pall of suspicion over such male-centric environments. Men find themselves wary of being misunderstood or miscategorized due to their participation in all male gatherings. There's a lurking concern about blurring the lines between platonic and romantic involvement, and the possibility of their intentions being misconstrued. Moreover, these spaces have come under scrutiny from societal institutions seeking to level the playing field, arguing that they perpetuate exclusivity or toxic masculinity. This has led to a rise in gender-neutral spaces, which overlooks the unique needs and dynamics of men's support structures. Therefore, an intended consequence of the socially engineered societal division of men's sexuality is the erosion of these critical male social environments. This is a regrettable loss, considering that these spaces historically provided men with a platform for emotional expression and mutual support. Moreover, the categorization of men based on their sexual behavior reduces their value to their sexual activity, ignoring their broader contributions to society. It strips men of their individuality and their potential for change and development. This reductionist view stymies men's emotional growth and hampers their ability to form healthy, diverse relationships. So, how can we navigate towards a more rational and even traditional understanding of men's sexuality? We can realign the focus from artificial categories of sexual orientation to individual behavior and personal autonomy placing emphasis on the idea that a man's principal identifier is his gender, not his sexual inclinations.
This framework involves understanding that sexual behavior is a continuum that encompasses a wide range of actions and experiences that are inherent to all men. In this context, every behavior within that continuum should be accepted as part of the broader definition of masculinity and maleness. Dispensing with sexual orientation as a primary method of categorizing men would also remove the artificial divisionary barriers, fostering an environment where men can build strong support networks without fear of being shamed or misunderstood. The compartmentalization of men's sexuality into a modern construct of sexual orientation is a reductionist approach that serves the interests of external power structures rather than the individual or men in general. It breeds paranoia and division, weakening men's ability to form meaningful relationships with each other. By moving towards a more nuanced and individualistic understanding of men's sexuality, we can promote stronger support networks among men and cultivate a society where men are valued for their overall contributions.
Much obliged you hopped on board for this snazzy trip through American life in the 1940s and 1950s, all captured through nifty vintage photographs. If this flick's got your motor running, don't be a square. Click on that jolly bucket of bolts to subscribe to the channel for more top drawer content just like this.